All right, Victorum Gaming fans, we're back with another SPQR video. Today we're taking a look at Dacia and Sarmatia, so it's another video in our sort of faction overview and review series. And um, yeah, so Dacia and Sarmatia, not necessarily one that uh, maybe everybody immediately knows about, but really cool faction. You're basically getting uh, sort of two armies in one. Um, so the Dacians are going to be a little bit more like... Um, uh, sort of the tribal uh, type troops, so really a little bit more like uh, Gaul, Germania, that kind of stuff. And then the Sarmatians really bring in the cavalry element, and at that, basically, like the not necessarily the best, because uh, that's always going to be subjective, but uh, the heaviest uh, cavalry really in the game in their uh, cataphract. So let's take a look as usual. Uh, again, SPQR does a nice job of giving you a little bit of history, background, and all that. Um, but let's jump into what everybody's here for, and that's uh, starting off with the heroes as normal. So again, um, like some of the other factions, you get a sort of a budget hero at 45 denarii. Um, pretty normal stats here, uh, plus one range, plus two melee, two melee dice. Good agility at plus two, and solid bravery um, as well. Uh, no armor to start with, but again, you get sort of this toolbox uh, as far as options go. There's just a ton here. So really, again, you get to kit out your heroes exactly what you need them for. So, you know, you got large shields here, scale armor, first time we've seen that so far going through the list. Uh, chain mail as well, uh, helmets, short spears, long spears, uh, daggers, you get the two-handed sword, which is basically that falx, uh, which we'll read about below. Uh, regular swords, slings, a horse. And then also barding for the horse, too. So, again, you can really customize this to exactly what you need. So, um, the Falks uh, is kind of what they're, the Dacians are known for. Uh, so, it's a two handed sword carried by Dacian heroes. Will actually be a Falks, a long blade with a pronounced curve that allowed it to slice past shields. An enemy with a shield will lose one parry when this hero carries a two handed sword and performs a melee action against them. So, um, you know, going against any other army that carries those shields. Um, especially, you know, typical opponent will be Romans of some flavor, um, but other Greeks and stuff like that too. So just being able to take a parry away is actually, uh, really, really nasty. So, um, but, uh, that is again for troops that are equipped with that. So may be something to consider for your hero, but again, really solid heroes here. Um, and again, really you can build just about anything you'd want for them. So light armored up to heavy armor, uh, pretty much anything in the way of weapons, whether you're on foot or mounted. So really, really worth uh, investing in some quality heroes here. All right, we start off on the Dacian side and basically you get three different infantry units, although there's a little bit of overlap between them. Uh, so the nobles, um, and really it's kind of interesting, the nobles you would think are sort of on the high end, but they start off actually as the cheapest option before upgrade, so only at 6 denarii. Um, you get ranged 1, melee plus 2, 2 melee dice, fairly standard stuff. Uh, only 1 agility and bravery, though. Um, you might expect maybe the a little bit more on the bravery front there, but um, yeah, beyond that, the normal, uh, so no armor yet and 1 wound. They do come with a sword, though, for that 6 denarii, so that's actually pretty decent. Uh, you do have the option to go with short spears, leather armor, Large shields, chainmail shirts, um, helmets, and then uh, the usual option there of basically like a, a horn for 10 and a standard for 25. So um, even though they start out at 6 here, you can definitely upgrade them into some fairly uh, beefy infantry. So if you go all the way with chainmail, you're still clocking in at 18. And if you drop that large short, uh, or large shield, you're getting 23. So you're about a you know Roman legionary, uh, but you have some other cool abilities here too so um, you basically get that uh, sort of tribal fighter thing that we've seen with the, the Britons um, and we'll see next with uh, the Gauls and then the Germanians too so you get this strength and numbers rule so um, so basically a unit of nobles gains courage from its numbers if it has 10 or more models it's plus one on bravery and if it's 20 it's plus two to bravery so uh, if you bring the numbers here um, again depending on how you kit these guys out um, might not be possible if you go all in with you know chainmail and sh uh, large shields but if you keep them fairly cheap, it's certainly uh, sh shouldn't be a problem basically to get over 20 here. So that plus one bravery suddenly going up to plus three uh, definitely uh, means they'll stick around a little bit. But again, uh, you got to give them some armor if you want them to really stay. Uh, and then they also get that wild charge ability. Um, so the initial charge is wild, uh, chaotic, and crazy enough to break all but the most disciplined enemies. 
A unit of nobles that charges gains a bonus melee dice for each model in the unit, regardless of whether they get into contact with an enemy model. So that can be devastating if you get that charge off. So, uh, you know, opposing players are well advised to basically like whittle these guys down. So um, certainly if they're above 20, you definitely want to get them under 20. Uh, anything you can do to knock that bravery down. Um, and ideally best uh, if you just charge them instead of being charged by them. So uh, that wild charge can uh, kind of lead to some crazy swings there. Um, with all those extra dice. So uh, nobles, again, starting off really cheap, but um, lots of different options here, whether you want to keep them very light infantry up through fairly um, heavy infantry as well. So um, definitely a good, solid uh, building block there. Moving on, we come to the Falksmen, and these guys start off at basically twice the cost of the nobles, 12 denarii base cost. And for that, you're getting a large shield and that two-handed sword. Uh, now in the FAQ they made some updates on basically how that works. So you like you'll get to use the uh, the shield basically against uh, incoming missile attacks. But then when you're in combat, um, you switch to the sword. Um, so that helps explain that. Um, no armor to start with, but let's check up top. They do have the plus two melee and two melee dice that we'd expect from a mainly close combat focused unit. Everything else is pretty standard there. They do also have the strength and numbers and wild charge of the nobles. So again, don't be scared necessarily by that plus one bravery or, or fooled into that. Um, if these guys bring the numbers, um, that uh, bravery is uh, going to be much higher, of course. Um, so uh, we said nothing in the way of armor. What do they have for options here? Um, really, only uh, a helmet, seemingly. So um, for two more dinar, you can give them a helmet, which just gives you plus one to your armor, doesn't slow your move or anything. Um, so, and then you get the option to buy a horn and a standard too. Um, that sword though is where the, is kind of like the business end here. Um, so that's that rule that we saw before. So basically taking away a parry from enemies, um, with that will be, um, you know, it's, uh, losing one parry for each Falksman in contact with them. So, you know, if you can spread out far enough and sort of wrap around, uh, opposing units, um, their armor um, is about all it's going to save them because uh, if you can start knocking away the, the amount of parries that they get, um, you you can definitely then start forcing more actual armor checks and then hopefully gradually uh, sort of winning that war of attrition. Now, um, that will be a little bit dangerous, of course, because, again, even if you do buy that armor uh, in the form of the helmet, it's only a plus one. You're going to be saving on a five or better, um, assuming they don't have other ways of negating your armor. So... Um, you definitely, uh, it's basically going to be all in the charge here, um, the wild charge, bringing in all those numbers and just causing as much damage to those first, that first round or even second round of combat as you possibly can. Um, because, um, again, that their own lack of armor is really not going to keep them around too long. So, and you better hope your dice are hot too, of course. So, uh, the Falksman, another good unit here again, twice the base cost of the nobles, um, uh, without really too many options. Um, Probably is even best to just not even bother with the helmet, just to keep the cost down for sort of minimal armor. Just keep that 12 points, uh, 12 denarii. Um, probably worth investing in a horn and standard, though, uh, depending on the unit. Certainly the horn doesn't hurt with that extra action once per game. Um, and then really just it's kind of like going all in on the strength of numbers and wild charge, basically. So, and then we come to our last of the real, like, Dacian units here, and that's what we call the Tribesmen. Um, so these guys come in with a base denarii of seven, uh, only plus one on range and melee, still two melee dice though. And then again, standard sort of across the board, plus one agility, plus one bravery, uh, no armor and a wound. Now here they basically say they can come with a bow, javelin, or sling. So I guess you got to pick one. Um, if you, I guess, start with the javelin, um, you do have the option there of buying two more for two more denarii apiece, or, you know, if you want... If you got the bow, but you want to do some up close work, uh, you can buy some javelins there too. Uh, again, you do have the option to give these guys helmets uh, for some armor, uh, small shields, and uh, swords. So you could invest some points in these guys and turn them into sort of a sort of light uh, combat infantry. Um, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be wise to expect them to win too many fights, but. With some parries between the swords and shields, again, if you're going in that route, um, they can definitely uh, knock away some hits. But um, wouldn't, again, count on just that helmet armor saving you if you do decide to go that route. So um, maybe keeping these guys as um, sort of a hybrid um, ranged unit. So, And again, depending on what you do here, uh, like the sling option, basically you're going to be probably shooting from sort of max distance. Um, you don't really want to get too close there. 
Um, 30 inches is pretty good, but um, and especially only being able to shoot once per turn, really, because uh, you have to reload. Um, so, yeah, it's, there's a lot of things to consider with these guys. Um, now, the bow and the javelins, of course, give you flexibility. Bow is kind of that intermediate range javelin. you got to be fairly close. I think it was 10 inches. Um, so maybe buying some extras there and just kind of having this be a, um, you know, a, uh, a shooty unit that maybe can do a little bit of combat work if you maybe just buy them a sword or something. Uh, only plus one melee does kind of um, hinder them. But on the other hand, two dice apiece, uh, sometimes just the weight of uh, throwing a bucket of dice basically can, can get the job done. Um, they are uh, definitely not going to be like your center line. Uh, combat unit or anything like that. They do have hit and run, so uh, definitely making use of that. If you do need to charge in and finish something up on the flanks, hopefully they um, have enough to, no, enough uh, numbers and things to, to get that job done. Um, and along with that, if you kind of keep the cost down, you should be able to afford bigger units because they do also have that strength and numbers rule. So um, maybe 20 plus of these guys might be a little bit unrealistic depending on what you're trying to accomplish. But anywhere, you know, plus uh, above 10, but less than 20, just to get that bravery up a little bit too. That could be interesting. So um, a really neat little unit that definitely has a couple of different options there uh, in comparison to the nobles and the uh, Falksmen, which are really just your, your combat guys. Um, so that basically takes care of the Dacian side. Then we get on to the Sarmatians. And here it's just all about cavalry. Uh, so cataphracts, uh, these guys are really just like the tanks of the game here. Um, pretty badass. Um, 45 denarii a piece though. Um, movement is only five because they do actually have barding. So that does slow them down, but, um, range plus one. We don't care about that. That's not what they're here for. Plus two melee is good. Two melee dice. So very standard there. Uh, only plus one on bravery, but their armor is plus four. So you're saving on two pluses basically. Um, really awesome. And then the two wounds for being cavalry. So they have barding, um, the horse, obviously, uh, long spears, uh, scale armor and swords. So um, very good flexibility there. So you, you are getting a fair uh, range of things for your 45 denarii. They do have the option for a horn and standard. Um, and then the Kantos uh, is a really cool rule. So, um, so basically when they charge, their long spears actually gain lethal three for the duration of um, that melee action rather than the normal plus, or sorry, not plus two, lethal two uh, that cavalry would get with spears. So lethal three on the charge is just absolutely devastating. Even uh, really any other medium to heavy cavalry are gonna be scared of this. Um, and certainly most infantry are going to fear that um, if they, um, you know, if, they, if the hits go through and they're not parried, um, that will be uh, just quite scary. The thing that's going to hamper these guys a little bit, of course, is their cost. There's only so many of these guys that you're going to be able to afford. So being able to apply them correctly and bring that, uh, you know, that make that lethal three basically uh, sort of maximally effective is going to be the key with these guys. But um, definitely anyone on the other side of the table should respect this unit um, and uh, do their best to sort of mitigate um, their effectiveness. Uh, so chances are you're not really going to, uh, drop any of these guys with just you know typical missile fire like bows or something like that. Uh, might take some javelins and other stuff just to down a few of these guys so that their eventual charge is not so deadly. And again, them being a little bit slower with just a basic five inch move uh, that does factor in too. But um, you know certainly worth paying attention to if they have a horn in the unit and other things just for that possible extra mobility once a game there. So um, very very scary. Um, this is definitely like the um, the firepower unit um, uh, for close combat. And then we come to the light cavalrymen, um, which uh, again, have some options there for basically kitting them out a little bit for sort of light close combat work uh, in the form of short spears. And you can give them some small shields too. They do have plus one armor for being the mounted, uh, plus one bravery, uh, two dice uh, for melee, but only plus one to that and only plus one ranged. Um, but I think really where these guys are at, and um, you just have to spend the points on it. So they start at 22 denarii, but you have the option there to upgrade horse, upgrade two horse archers with a plus one bonus to ranged and bravery for six denarii each, which uh, seems like a hell of a bargain. Um, so 28 denarii is certainly not cheap, but having a cavalry unit that's going to be able to get around the board at plus two ranged with their bows. So basically if you can... Um, use these guys correctly on the flanks and get to really good positions. Um, they're, they're going to be, uh, quite the harassment unit. Um, and, uh, they do also have hit and run. So if they do have to get in there, um, again, you might, 
Um, might not make sense to do that unless you really give them the short spears to actually charge. But um, uh, again, going in on that, you'd have uh, 31 points apiece. Um, the shield maybe don't need... Um, but, uh, yeah, these guys could definitely do a lot of nasty things on the flanks. So, um, well worth considering upgrading them to horse archers there just to, um, have some actually really good ranged skill. Uh, again, the question is always going to be on the Sarmatian side, really, um, uh, the, the, the points cost there. So can you bring enough numbers to really have that be critical? Um, so, but that's where some of the cheaper Dacians come in. And then interestingly enough too, I'm just... The, with the historical contact with Rome. Um, these guys do also have access to the Scorpio team. Um, we're not going to go into full details on that again. Uh, just check out our uh, uh, Caesar's Legions video on that. Um, but it, it is interesting that you do get basically an um, artillery piece here as well. And then on the mercenary side, they can use themselves, but they also have access to Germania uh, for mercenaries. And then we come over to the Really, they have two heroes, but it's really one hero because um, basically in order to take this guy down here, Susages, or however you pronounce his name, um, you ha actually have to take King Decibilis. Um, and so really, if you're taking Decibilis and not taking Susages, and we'll talk about the abilities uh, in just a second, um, then I think really you're just doing it wrong. So really, this is a two for one, really. You take him for 100 denarii, and you get a hell of a lot of uh, cool abilities here. So... Um, Desilus at 75 denarii is a just absolute steal. Um, this guy is really, really good. Um, and again, just another 25 denarii to get his uh, little helper buddy here, Susages. We'll talk about him in a second. But 75 denarii gets you a whole hell of a lot. Um, so he's a level 6 hero for only 75. Um, just plus 1 range, but he's got plus 3 melee, 3 dice, plus 2 agility, plus 3 bravery, plus 2 armor, and a whopping 6 wounds. All that for 75 denarii. So uh, he is definitely under-costed. He also comes with some cool abilities. He's got Die Hard, Die Harder, uh, Heroic Rush, Horse Warrior, um, Inspire, Mighty Blow, and Shield Bash. Comes with large, a large shield, scale armor, and a sword. Um, he does have the upgrade option, which is for his little buddy below for another 25 denarii. And then his special ability is really powerful if you can use it um, to sort of full effect. So once per turn, if an enemy hero performs an action within 12 of him, the king can make an opposed bravery check, and bravery plus 3 is pretty damn solid. Um, with that hero, um, if King Decibilis is successful, he may perform an immediate and free action before the hero performs his. So, um, basically the potential to get extra actions with this guy each and every turn, assuming enemy heroes are within 12 of you. So, um, really interesting, uh, just have that extra ability to maneuver or whatever it might be. And heck, if you can charge them before they actually act, um, and potentially kill a hero, um, you know, even more dangerous. So that will certainly give opponents um, something to consider when they're trying to get close to him. Um, beyond that, um, if you do somehow get close to him with an enemy hero, um, he's uh, he's no slouch in combat. So Die Hard, basically, we saw that with um, and, uh, some of our um, heroes from uh, previous armies. But basically, if they're at zero wounds, they have a chance to basically come back with one wound. Um, and then normally, if they take another wound beyond that, they're just dead. But um, there's Die Harder, which he has too, which basically gives him an extra wound on top of that. Again, you have to pass a check for that and keep passing checks each turn. But so theoretically, basically, he has almost eight wounds is how you could look at it. So um, that's assuming, again, if he actually somehow gets below, uh, if you actually manage to drop him to zero wounds in the first place. Um, again, all of his abilities and combinations of uh, factors here. Um, he's, he's, he's pretty good. Um, he's got Heroic Rush, too. Once per game, he gets three actions. Um, he's got Horse Warrior. Um, I always want to read that as Warrior, but it's uh, Warrior. Um, so basically, he can make a bravery test, or sorry, a uh, cavalry that want to charge him have to do a bravery test to charge him. If they fail the bravery test, they, they have to pick basically a different action. They just don't get to charge that action. Um, so it's great for wasting people's actions. Um, and f the funny thing, of course, is if you, depending on how you combo these things, um, uh, you know, if the opponent has a hero in that cavalry unit, you might be able to get that perpetually off balance ability to work too. So you can put yourself in an even better spot where maybe they can't even charge you that all that that turn if you move further away, or you set yourself up for a potential charge when it when you get to activate. Um, so lots of crazy things there. Now, if they do somehow succeed that bravery check uh, and manage to contact you, 
um, even then they're at minus one melee uh, on that particular action. So um, just uh, really uh, a great way of sort of slowing down cavalry, their effectiveness. Uh, he's got Inspire, so basically friends within 12 may reroll will to fight, um, which again, with some of the potential bravery issues uh, as your numbers get whittled down, that, that can be great too. He's got Mighty Blow, so he can basically just only have one attack if he wants, but then it can cause triple wounds and a possible knockdown. And Shield Bash as well, so uh, basically you can do damage um, with the attack, but then also have a chance at a knockdown, but it uses the Smasher rule, so it can't be parried, so really good shot of having that go through. Um, and then beyond that, just his normal stats here. Uh, again, he's just really damn solid. You're getting, honestly, uh, a whole hell of a lot here for 75 Denari. It's, um, um, I don't know if, if there's been too much uh, play with him where people maybe think he's a little bit um, uh, too good for his points cost, but it um, be interesting to hear some feedback on that if anybody runs a Dacian and Sarmatian army and has actually run Decibilis, um, or maybe what opponents think of him. Um, but for 75 Denari, again, I think he's really awesome. And then we come to his buddy Susages here for 25 Denari. Again, no reason really to not make the room to fit him into your list. He really, as you can see, doesn't have much in the way of stats. Pretty much everything is a zero. Uh, he does have one melee die and two wounds. Uh, and he comes with a large shield, scale armor, and a sword. So, uh, he can theoretically survive uh, a little bit of combat, but again, you probably don't want that to happen. His only talents are Divine Luck times two, so basically twice he can reroll two dice a game, uh, or you get to reroll two dice a game. Uh, but his abilities were really um, where he really pays for himself too. Um, so at the start of the battle, roll two dice. Uh, the Dacian and Sarmatian player can change any of his dice rolls uh, to a six this many times, so long as both Decibilis and Susages are on the battlefield and within one of each other. So basically you park this guy behind Decibilis so that he's not in the line of fire. And um, assuming you can roll hot um, at the beginning of the game for this, um, you know, just being able to, when you need to... Um, uh, change any of your die rolls to six that can be just absolutely um powerful uh, again uh some applications there so um would you like to roll a six for your initiative well put that down um would you like uh, a six at very critical points for whatever it might be uh there's all kinds of things you need to pass a bravery check or something like that um so lots of applications here um uh, interestingly, too, I think I may be wrong, but I think his divine luck ability would count towards those two dice you roll at the beginning of the battle, too. So, you know, if you roll something like Snake Eyes, obviously that kind of sucks. Um, so, it might be worth rerolling one or more of your your two dice there, um, just to have a chance of maybe getting like uh, box cars uh, at the beginning of the game. Uh, having twelve dice that you could change to sixes basically at your will, because um, it doesn't say. It doesn't say anything about a restriction as like how many you can change per phase or anything like that. So um, really, you could be going first every turn of the game, um, just about, um, or just you know really using it at the most uh, crucial of times. Again, you got to keep both these guys alive and within one inch of each other. But if you're if you're playing smart um, and things are going your way here, um, this can be really really nasty. So. Um, so yeah, that's the Dacians and Sarmatians. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, uh, we'll definitely uh, have some more content on these guys down the road uh, as we take a look at their missions. But um, if you like the video, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe for the channel. And we'll be back with more uh, SPQR content.